Thanks for tuning in. This is Michael from Science Out There, and I want to show you how I make Aurora time lapses, so you can too. This is the second video in a series of six, and I uploaded all of them all at once, so you can watch any of them right now or in any order. The one you're watching right now is for tips and tricks for acquiring the best possible image sequences for your time lapse. At the end of the video, you can then choose to watch all of the time lapse construction tutorials I made, or just skip around and pick the one you want to see next. The first thing you need to do, of course, is acquire your image sequence. Typically, you'd be doing this with a DSLR camera, but there are other options as well that I mentioned right up here. I want to get some real quick math out of the way first. The most common frame rates for actual video output round out to 24, 30, or 60 frames per second, and some variations on those in Europe, like 25 and 50 frames per second. However, attention to detail matters. You'll also run into rates like 23.976 frames per second, 29.97. I won't get into the details of holdovers from early 20th century broadcast television, but I want to be really clear that 23.976 and 24 are not the same. And if you mix them up in your workflow, you'll get a herky-jerky time lapse. Most people might not notice, but I will, and I'll catch you. <laughs> Most of the time, your video-capable camera is going to output regular video in one of these slightly off numbers, depending on what region your camera came from or what region you tell the camera to output video for. So when you go to produce a final video, make sure you are consistent. If you record regular video at 23.976 and build your time lapses at 24 or 30 and put those two videos together in your final production, it's going to look a little weird. The easy answer. Pick just one and stick with it. For purposes of this video, I'm going to be doing all time lapses and calculations at 23.976. That's really close to 24 and close enough for this next math part. That means a 24 image sequence is going to result in a one second long time lapse. 240 images, a 10 second long time lapse. And 1000 images will be just over 40 seconds long. Ideally, you want to make a time lapse sequence that's not too long but also not too short. My preference is 10 to 20 seconds, and that usually looks pretty good in a final production. Too long without much changing in your video and your audience will get bored. Too short, and you'll leave your audience unsatisfied with the experience. When capturing northern lights, your shutter duration might be as low as two seconds or as high as 20, depending on what the lights are doing, how bright they are, and of course, what gear you're using to capture them. So for a 10 second long, 20 frames per second time lapse, that's gonna be 240 separate images. 240 images times your shutter duration is the total acquisition time. With five second exposures times 240, it will take 1200 seconds, that's 20 minutes. That's the acquisition time, or how long it takes to make the entire image sequence. And it's not quite perfect math either. There's typically some delay in between each shot on many cameras. It might be mere milliseconds on up to a full second per shot. So to account for that, arbitrarily add at least another two minutes of acquisition time for your time lapse to make sure you have what you need. Shoot Aurora with your lens at a wide open aperture. If you choose something other than wide open, the iris of your lens has to change shape for every photo and it might not be consistent from shot to shot. Shooting at something other than f2.8 on an f2.8 lens might introduce some flicker, but there's a fix for that, and you might get some flicker shooting wide open anyway. I'll come back to that in one of the video options you'll see at the end. When acquiring your images, you're trying to capture an X second long image every X seconds. So five every five and 10 every 10. So make sure you plan that in your camera or on your remote appropriately. I know for Canon users specifically, you can set your camera to burst shutter mode and then just lock the shutter down. As long as your shutter time for individual images is one second or longer, you won't overfill the camera's memory buffer and the camera will happily take images indefinitely at a consistent rate. So a couple of things to think about. You're going to do some quick math in your head in the field or just make yourself a cheat sheet. Longer exposure or shutter times mean it will take longer to make your time lapse. At 20 second shutter speed per frame, it will take you a full hour and 20 minutes to acquire enough images for a proper time lapse. And lastly, long shutter speeds might smear details in the Aurora or make your final product move really fast perhaps unpleasantly fast. My five second example shutter time wasn't by accident. That actually is just about the sweet spot. 20 minutes of Northern Lights shrunk down to 20 seconds 
has a nice look to it. So if you can, shoot for that, but also be willing to adapt. A weak display on the horizon will need a longer shutter speed, while bright, fast-moving northern lights will look much better with the shorter shutter speed. So on to the workflow. The first time I do this, I'm going to do a standard 8-bit per channel time-lapse, nothing fancy. Next, I'll show you how to do the same thing with a 10-bit high dynamic range end-to-end -end workflow, which is really similar, but with a few key differences. And finally, I show off a really cheap alternative and a really powerful alternative. If you are already familiar with a similar process and like yours better, that's just fine. But you might learn a few nuggets along the way and tricks you might like to incorporate into yours. So don't click away just yet. If you're watching one of these and you're screaming at me at some point, why not just use such and such software? or some specific method. I'll probably be talking about it in one of the other videos. If I miss some ideas and you'd like to share, head down in the comments so I can steal it, uh, have a look at it. Click any one of the four panels on your screen right now to jump to the time-lapse method you are most interested in, or watch them in order for the best experience. What are you waiting for? Click one. Click the first one. Quick, you're almost out of time.